Senior Air Force leaders believe that current shortages in the United States bomber fleet are putting the service and the nation at tremendous risk of enemy attack. The Air Force has withered significantly since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Currently, it possesses only approximately 1,500 fighters and roughly 135 bombers. By any standard, today's fleet is the oldest, smallest, and least ready in Air Force history. The average fighter is now 26 years old, and the average bomber is 49, making maintenance of these jets a challenge. Just 60% of the service's combat aircraft are mission-capable. If tensions between the U.S. and China escalate to war, the Air Force will have less than a third of the combat-capable fighter and bomber assets it had when last prepared to fight a peer adversary. For years now, the Air Force has been ordering a minimum of 100 B-21 Raiders at a rate of 10 jets per year to replace its oldest bombers. It will be lucky if it can declare its first squadron operational by 2027. Meanwhile, multiple heads of the Air Force Global Strike Command, along with other observers, have suggested that the U.S. really needs more stealth bombers. Most recently, STRATCOM boss General Anthony J. Cotton stressed the importance of producing B-21 bombers at a faster rate. The limited production rate of the B-21 is, is the only thing that I wish we could do a little quicker. Um, the, the fact that, um, that that is an incredible sixth-generation platform... Um, Unfortunately, China's military rise has far exceeded expectations, and one of the service's most senior leaders believes it could move on Taiwan as early as next year. To deter that move and be prepared for war should deterrence fail, the Air Force must immediately accelerate the fielding of the Raider, increasing the production rate to 20 jets per year. The B-21 Raider will be the future backbone of the bomber fleet, said General Thomas A. Boussier, the head of Air Force Global Strike Command, on March 7th. We need credible, modern systems. But will 100 Raiders be enough? The U.S. Air Force really needs more bombers to engage China or Russia in a war. However, as the B-21 comes online, the service may not be able to afford maintaining its older B-52 Stratofortress, B-1B Lancer, and B-2 Spirit. Thus, the bomber fleet will get smaller before it gets bigger. General Timothy Ray, a former commander of Air Force Global Strike Command, stated in 2019 that the U.S. Air Force needs as many as 225 bombers. In line with Ray's assessment, which underscores the critical need for an expanded bomber fleet, Mark Gunzinger, a retired U.S. Air Force officer who leads future concepts and capability assessments at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, called for the service to purchase upwards of 225 Raiders. More resources can buy back future risk, and that's what a more aggressive acquisition rate for the B-21 can do, Gunzinger told reporters. The need to rebuild bomber force fleets that can simultaneously defeat Chinese aggression in the Indo-Pacific, credibly deter an opportunistic aggressor in another theater, and prevent nuclear attacks on the United States is evident. Therefore, the U.S. Air Force should develop a total force of more than 300 bombers, including at least 225 stealthy B-21s. It is unlikely that Congress would approve such an acquisition. The issue is the cost of the B-21 Raider, with each expected to have a price tag of around $700 million, making it the most expensive aircraft ever built. 100 of these aircraft would cost $70 billion. However, it could be argued that the U.S. cannot afford not to build at least 100 and should consider doubling the order. Though the executives and shareholders at Northrop Grumman would no doubt welcome an order of 200 or more B-21 Raiders, the question is how long it might take to build that many aircraft. Initial planning has begun for the retirement of the B-1 Lancer and B-2 Spirit, but the game plan depends largely on progress in fielding the B-21 Raider. The approach we're taking on the road to a two-bomber force for Air Force Global Strike Command is maintaining our current capability and readiness in terms of our near-peer adversary as the B-21 ramps up, said Brigadier General William S. Rogers in a recent interview. At this point, the team is really focused on maintaining that readiness, availability, survivability, and operational capability for the B-1 and B-2 while we get ready for the B-21 fielding. In an Air Force bomber roadmap, the service planned to retire the B-1 and B-2 in the 2031 to 2032 timeframe. Long term, it plans to field only B-21s and B-52s. The B-52s are expected to serve into the 2050. However, questions still remain. 
First, extending the B-52 to 2050 will mean replacing its engines and making various other upgrades, such as a new radar, to make it structurally viable and cost-efficient. Even if everything goes perfectly, there is no guarantee that the B-52 will last until 2050, when the jets will be nearly 90 years old. Structurally, the jet appears sound, but as the Air Force found out with the B-1, that assumption can change in an instant. Second, even if the B-52 does last until 2050, will it be replaced, or does the Air Force plan to have only one type of bomber in its inventory? These issues are even more pressing considering the current state of the Air Force's bomber fleet. Though the B-1 is younger than the B-52, the Rockwell-built bomber faces multiple structural issues after nearly two decades of continuous operations in Iraq and Syria. There is no guarantee the B-1 will last until its planned retirement dates or will not need massive investments to do so. This is a problem because analysts tend to assume that the United States will always have the long-range strike capacity it requires. Any major conflict with China is bound to be rife with difficulties, but even in optimistic assessments, the role of cruise missiles and bombers is critical. Stealth bombers, such as the B-21, can penetrate A-2AD systems for targets requiring direct attack weapons, but non-stealth bombers can also provide hundreds of standoff weapons at the outset of hostilities. The same is true for Russia. Even though the United States has bases and allies in the region, the sheer number of standoff weapons necessary to defeat the integrated air defenses of Kaliningrad would require significant bomber participation. Fighters also provide critical capabilities, but their ability to strike targets is limited due to their small payloads and short ranges. Fighters depend on bases and tankers relatively close to the front line, and in a major conflict involving waves of ballistic missiles, the security of these bases is a severe concern. Weapons capacity and the ability to deploy from long distances make bombers indispensable. And as it stands, the US is already lacking. The bomb truck concept envisions modifying cargo jets to employ standoff weapons. According to Air Force officials, this approach leverages their workhorse C-17 and C-130 aircraft, which can carry payloads similar to those of bomber aircraft. Additionally, these cargo planes can operate from a wider range of bases, making it harder for rivals, chiefly China, to track and destroy them. In a series of tests since early 2020, the Air Force Research Laboratory and Air Force Special Operations Command have dropped pallets of real or simulated cruise missiles from cargo planes to see if they could deploy and strike a target. The project is known as Rapid Dragon, and Air Mobility Command, which oversees the service's cargo and tanker fleets, is now looking to widen the effort. During exercise, Atreus-22, 2 MC-130J, flew the Rapid Dragon package to a Royal Norwegian Air Force training range and deployed it over the Atlantic Ocean. It absolutely serviced a target and was extremely, extremely successful. This is the first time Rapid Dragon has been employed using cargo aircraft in the US European Command Theater. And the precision munitions capabilities for medium-sized or larger cargo aircraft allow US and NATO forces a flexible rapid response option. The palletized munition options are appealing because of their low costs, but they are not long-term strategic answers. The bomb truck would provide a short-term solution and would likely only carry a small number of standoff weapons. Palletized munitions might be a fantasy, given the already limited supply and high demand for airlift assets. Therefore, if 300 bombers are required, why not just buy 300 B-21s? The obvious answer is price, the Air Force might be lucky to get 100 B-21s. Additionally, relying on a stealth-only bomber force would rob the United States of important capabilities. A diverse bomber fleet, including both stealth and conventional bombers, ensures flexibility in various combat scenarios. Non-stealth bombers like the B-52 can carry larger payloads and operate in environments where stealth is less critical, offering a strategic advantage. Moreover, the development and maintenance costs associated with a stealth-only fleet could strain the defense budget, impacting other critical areas of military readiness and innovation. Thus, a balanced approach incorporating both stealth and non-stealth bombers would provide a more versatile and cost-effective solution for the Air Force.